mind and his heart. Please keep your hands up. Dear Lord Jesus Christ, you know your son. You know everything he goes through. Bless him, Lord, abundantly with perseverance, with love, joy, and with that, that, that fire that you have given him in his heart. May that fire never, ever, ever be extinguished, ever, by no one. Amen. Amen. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Now, I'm going to go up there to the front. Just make sure it's running right here. Oh, it is. Cool. Sweet. How's everybody doing? Hey, you know what? If it wasn't for the triumphant entry, if it wasn't for a sacrifice, all those things that she's talking about, it wouldn't be able to happen. Because I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody, like I always say, about somebody who died for me and, 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 and gave me a new life and transformed me. And this is a triumphant entrance. We're talking about here Palm Sunday. He knew he was going to get killed. He knew they were going to kill him. They wanted him. But he still thought of every single one of us when he entered into Jerusalem. So it's not just Palm Sunday. It's Jesus giving his life for us. And so when I'm up here right now, I give praise to him because it's only by his mercy and graces. But I have to say one thing real quick before I get into this message. You guys ever heard of Proverbs 31 woman? That woman who serves God, who's obedient, who serves the community, who loves others. And you know what? This woman, I just want to tell her thank you right now. She's my fiance. She actually just did a, her testimony right now. But if it wasn't for her enduring love, I met her right here at the sower a year and I don't know, about four months ago. But right here, this is where I was able to make this very beautiful, very loving woman who endures all my growing pains. And so I just want to tell you, thank you, and give you a shout out because it means a lot to me what you do. She's on fire. She is the real deal. And I thank Jesus every single day for her. Amen. Can we get a standing up real quick? Do a little bit of Catholic calisthenics. I like to call it like a mass. We go up, we go down, right? We go up, we go down. We're used to it. We're Catholics. Amen. I want to see smiles on the faces when, when I'm asking you guys to get up. So we're going to do a St. Michael the Archangel prayer because I love that prayer. I have to do it all times. It's, it's a part of me. With my St. Michael the Archangel rosary right here too, my 60 millimeter cannon blasting the devil away. Here we go. In the name of the Father, in nomine Patris et Fili, Spiritus Sanctus, Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do, O thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all evil spirits that wander around the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. In nomine Patris et Fili et Spiritus Sanctus. Amen. It is only by his sacrifice on the cross one more time, because we're talking about Palm Sunday here. Triumphant entrance. But that entrance would lead to that. And when he was entering into Jerusalem, he was thinking about every single one of you. So we want to be like those ones that were screaming out Hosanna, right? Cheering on. So I just want to say reparations, reparations, reparations. Remember, everything we do for God makes up for the things we've done wrong in the past. Let's make reparations. You've hurt somebody? Let's try to repair it. It's my middle name. I love doing it. But... I got I to gotta do this because I got all of you guys standing up here right now. And it's something I've been doing. It's called I Love Being Catholic. It's a Catholic cadence. And it's nice because I have women and I have men in here. So usually it's mainly men or it's teenagers. So it's nice to have women and men in here. Who loves Jesus? Who loves Jesus? Amen? So when I say this, I want you guys to repeat after me. And I want you guys to be proud of doing this. Because you know what it does? We should be excited. Because when he was entering into Jerusalem, Hosanna! Save us! Long live the king! Acknowledging him. So I'm now I'm going to do what I call the Catholic cadence. Cadence. So repeat it after me after I say it. Let's do it. Because I love being Catholic. When he did that triumphant entry, he saved my life. It's by that entry, by that death, why I'm transforming, why we're all here right now. We don't take our eyes off of it. So just cheer after me. Ready? Ready, brother? I see you right there. I like that excitement right there. Angel, you ready? I need everybody to cheer this in here, all right? 
It's for God. We love you over there. He's in the tabernacle. We love you, Jesus. He's all around us. When two or more come together, he is in the midst. Here we go. One, two. I love being Catholic. Wait, 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 wait. I, I, didn't have everybody, I didn't have everybody cheering that right now. I want everybody, please. Because when we're doing this, we're representing for him, right? Unless y'all don't love being Catholic. Who loves being Catholic in here? Who loves the sacraments and how they strengthen us? Who loves the triumphant entry of Jesus Christ into Jerusalem so that he could die for us on the cross? So when I'm asking you to please cheer along with me, come on. It's for Jesus, amen? I don't want to be louder than you guys, but I know I'm going to be. I love being Catholic. I get my strength from the sacraments. I love being Catholic. I get my strength from the sacraments. Baptism washed my sins away. Confession lead me to a state of grace. The Eucharist is my source of life. I will serve you, Lord, and I won't think twice. Come on. I love being Catholic. I get my strength from the sacrament. I love being Catholic. I get my strength from the sacraments. Jesus is the King of Kings. He died for me and set me free. Rose again on the third day. I know He the life, the truth, the way. Amen. I love being Catholic. I get my strength from the sacraments. I love being Catholic. I get my strength from the sacraments. Hail Mary, full of grace. I'll stop on the devil's spit in his face. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. That's what the rosary does. Stomp on the devil's spit in his face. I love being Catholic. I get my strength from the sacrament. I love being Catholic. I get my strength from the sacrament. Jesus. 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 It is the name that is above all names. We know this. We call him out. When the enemy's around, when we're happy, when we're sad, when we're upset, invite him into every area of your life because we're going to live in victory. He thought you guys were so much, even though that he knew they wanted to beat him. He knew they wanted to kill him. He knew they had a green light out on Jesus. They was going to get him and they were going to take him out. And he still triumphantly went into Jerusalem. Please, let's sit down. You guys were awesome, by the way, right now. You guys sounded great. The triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Remember before Jesus went in Jerusalem, he told St. Peter, remember? He's like, Peter, we got to go into Jerusalem. And Peter's like, nah, man, we, let's not go over there, Jesus. And he says, no, get behind me, Satan, because Jesus knew we had a mission going into Jerusalem. He knew that entrance on Palm Sunday was for the salvation of our souls. Jesus had a mission planned. Jesus said it's time to crush the serpent and it's time to crush sin. So when he's entering in Jerusalem, he has something in his mind. He's about to crush the serpent. He's about to crush sin. And he's about to give you strength. Because what did, we, what did he do on the cross when he defeats the serpent? Not only... But we get the strength from the sacraments. You guys are just singing it right now. We get strength from Jesus Christ down on the cross through the sacraments. He suffered the cross to give us the sacraments so that we wouldn't struggle while we were here on earth. The proto-evangelium 
is Genesis 3.15. That's where the fall of man, right? Man falls. I will put enmity between the serpent and between her seed and your seed. He shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. Many Jews in Christ's days believed he was going to come back like this mighty warrior, a king, riding in on a horse because he was the Messiah. They were waiting for somebody like King Saul, like King David, maybe like King Solomon to just come and cause a ruckus and save them. But Jesus' world, he's not from this kingdom. His, he is not of this world. His kingdom is in another place. He has not come to save our flesh. Amen? But he's came to save what? Our souls, right? The triumphant entrance into Jerusalem to give his life for us. Matthew 21. If anybody has a Bible, Matthew 21. Anybody at home? Anybody at home? Matthew 21. Verses, we're just going to go 1 through like 20. And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and were come to Bethphage unto the Mount of Olives, then Jesus sent two disciples saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say unto you, ye shall say, the Lord hath need of them, and straightway he will send them. All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting on an ass, and a colt, the fowl of an ass. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the ass and the colt, and put them on their and put their clothes on them, and set him on there. So you guys know what's going on right now, right? Jesus is about to enter into Jerusalem, but instead of riding on a, a grand horse like kings would normally do, he comes riding lowly on a donkey. And I, I remember the day. Often when I, when I read this story, I can't help but place myself in the place of the ass that was tied up to the world for such a long time and left in one spot struggling with the things of this world. Yet, he comes to untie me. I was tied up good and it took more than one disciple, really. It took all the disciples to go over there and untie me. I was that ass, I was that donkey. The most unlikely place that Jesus would find a ride into his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. Think about that ass. When was that moment that Jesus called you, that donkey I'll say? That moment that Jesus called you out of your sin, out of your depression, out of your struggles, out of your hurt, out of your pain. We were all tied up to the world at one time. Pornography, fornication, despair, not having self-control. What was that moment that Jesus untied you? And so I sit there and I'm like, wait up. Are you sure Jesus asked for me? Are you sure he wanted me? I'm all tied up to the world. Murderer, drug addict, addiction, burglary, fornication, idolatry, it's no self-control. I've hurt so many people in my life. Are you sure that I'm the ass that Jesus wanted? And I struggle with that and I still struggle with it. Are you sure, Lord? Is it sure you're calling me? He said there will be an ass and there will be a fowl. Bring them to me. And that was me, wild and untamed at one time in my life, struggling in my life, broken. And yet, hold on one sec. And yet Jesus called me. Now, of course, Jesus doesn't need me, right? 
Amen. Jesus, Jesus doesn't really need none of us. But he still called me out to have a specific job for him. To preach the gospel. To open up people's hearts. But if I was only willing to say yes, you know how many years I was tied up to the world? 38 years I lived in the world. 38 years I struggled being tied up to things. And even though I would say I love Jesus, Jehovah Witness, I was still struggling in my drugs. My Protestantism but still struggling in homelessness. Kept on going back to prison. I say I love God, and I'm not living the right way. Tied up, struggling. When I see that donkey, it reminds me of that because they're not an elegant animal. They're known for bearing things on their back, heavy burdens. They're known as a laborer. They're not graceful and beautiful. Why would the king want to call someone like me that ass? And yes, of course, they said, yeah, Jesus wants you. And still in my reluctance, I thought to myself, hey, are you sure he wants me one more time? And of course, over my life, and even now over the last three years, people question, what are you, what are you doing? Are you sure you're real? We know all the things that used to be tied up to. Yeah, Jesus may have untied you, but are they still there? Are they going to tie you back up again? Are you going to go back into the world? That was that donkey. I was that ass at one time in my life. So people have always questioned, where is he going? What's he doing? Everyone thought I was a lost cause. But the master thought different. Donkeys were never used for beautiful things, right? They were used to just carry things, carry the burden of everything. People... When people don't want to carry something, oh, throw it on the donkey. Put it as heavy as you want on it. All these years over time. And it took me some time to answer. And finally I said the, yes to the Lord's knocking. And so they got a brush. And like, I'm going to go back to the scriptures now. They brushed him down. And they threw their cloaks on him, which was me. To make me clean and more befitting a place for our king and Lord to travel. This is an analogy to me of me being that donkey, okay? When they were brushing the donkey, they were cleaning off him. They put clean clothes on him. It reminds me of the radical transformation that's gone on in my life because of confession and the Eucharist. Because of always being able to get in a state of grace and being able to break those binds of my old ways. When they put that, when they put that new clothes and they brushed me down, I felt clean, so I went off. And Jesus could have chosen anybody, anything in the world, to carry on his message, like he does through every single one of you. But I was that jackass. I was that donkey tied up to life and the things in it. So I went off and I said, you know what? Jesus could have chosen anybody. And I know at times I feel unworthy of him choosing me. But still, he chose me. And so I see that God is flexing his powers. When he chose the donkey and when he chose me, he was flexing these powers, saying that I am strong enough and I am more powerful enough and I'm humble and meek to ride in that donkey to transform Eric's life so now that I can carry on this message of his love and his mercy with others, the jackass. Who would have thought? But yet there goes Jesus. Instead of choosing a war horse, he chose a middle-aged, lost, tied up to the world, depressed, addicted, fornicated, angry, impatient, facing life in prison individual in order to write him in triumphantly. But he used my story only. This is what I'm saying. This is an analogy. He used my story as the perfect opportunity to show us his true mercy and grace. That's why he died on the cross for us, right? We didn't die on the cross because we were holy already. He died so that we could be transformed. So that triumphant entrance, it's bigger than just Palm Sunday. We know it's Holy Week. We cannot have Palm Sunday without thinking about Good Friday, without thinking about the resurrection. It all goes together. Imagine my surprise. Remember, he's riding on top of me. 
as we drew closer and closer to the crowds, we're entering the gate. And I heard and I saw the cheers of the crowd, the confirmation of the greatness of our Lord. And the Lord just patted me on my head. And he told me, you did a great job. Now I give you the great commission to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth and make believers of all men. Which one of you can relate to me about the ass? About being tied up to the things of this world and not allowing God to fully use you? How many of you need God to untie you right now so that you can be more productive in the church and that he can use you more for kingdom advancement? What's tying us and holding us back from doing more for him? And a very great multitude, this is verse 8 now, and a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. And the multitudes that went before them and that followed cried, saying, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Man, they were laying down garments right now. But you guys know what the garments symbolize? This is very important because this reminds me if we go back into the Old Testament when King Solomon actually humbly wrote in. There was two great, great two entrances into Jerusalem at one time. One was of King Solomon and the other one was of King, of, of King Jesus, our eternal king. So when they're spreading the garments on the ground, it's a term, it's a gesture of respect and honor. Like I'm going to take off my cloak because I don't even want the donkey that Jesus is riding on. I don't even want the donkey that Jesus is going to be on to have to go on the ground. I'm going to take off my cloak and I'm going to throw it on the ground. Respect. Who's going to do that for Jesus nowadays? What if Jesus was doing that? Would you do it? That's what we have to ask ourselves. That donkey, are we serving God to its, our full capacity like that donkey was? He says, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, and he came to die for us through that grand, grand triumphant entrance into Jerusalem. That word, Hosanna, save us, save us. Jesus was coming to save them, yes. They thought like a political leader like we were talking about earlier, but he was, came, he was coming to transform their souls. He was here to show them compassion, mercy, and love. He was here to give us graces and mercy. Hosanna! In Hebrew can also mean long live. They're giving acknowledgement and praise to the King of Kings. Are we yelling Hosanna? Are we sharing it with our family members? They were out there on the streets. Woo! Screaming it. Are we, are we going to every Eucharistic procession? Are we serving in those Eucharistic processions? Those people were out in the streets and it said that those people got moved. They got moved by Jesus. Are you being moved like that? That's all, it's a question for all of us. It's an inner checking of us. I know I could speak all day long, but if we're not thinking about how we can become better for Jesus, then I'm just a babbling, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to be that. I want to be a source of God's love and encouragement to help us see life differently, to help us be more of who Christ needs us to be and not who the world set us to be. Remember that triumphant entrance, Palm Sunday. Hosanna, the chosen one coming to redeem us. Hosanna, acknowledgement of Jesus being the chosen and the Messiah. Hosanna, we need you. Are you telling him that every day? We need him every day still to this day. Hosanna. But you want to know what's different between us and them? They're screaming and shouting in the streets. We got the Roman government there. We got the Roman centurions, all their guards. We got the high priest guards. We got all the high priests. They don't like Jesus, right? But yet they're Hosanna. And they're out there in the streets laying their garments down, laying palm branches down. Because palm branches, like in the Maccabean Revolt, when they overtook the citadel in Maccabees 1, 
They laid the palm branches down because it symbolizes victory, triumph. It symbolizes that they won. They didn't even know the promise yet. That's the thing about it. They didn't understand the eternal heaven. We do. They were screaming Hosanna out and exclaiming him. Are we doing that also? Is Jesus the top of your list? Because if they were doing it back there and they didn't even have the promise, they didn't know the promise. They didn't know the fulfillment. They didn't know the promise that we had in Christ. They understood from prophecies, but they didn't know what we have. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that whoever perishes, shall, so whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. They didn't know about that. We got that already. We know he rose from the grave. They didn't, and they were still shouting out with joy. Are we shouting out with joy? And this is Maccabees 13. Just to read it to show you guys a little triumph and victory when they're using the palm branches. I like using these little things right here from the Old Testament. And the palm branches were a sign of victory and triumph, like in the book of Maccabees 13. On the 23rd day of the second month, in the 171st year, the Jews entered the citadel with shouts of praise, waving of palm branches, the playing of harps, cymbals and lyres, and singing of hymns and canticles, because a great enemy of Israel had been crushed. Jesus was going into Jerusalem, they were cheering him on with the palm branches. You want to know why? He was about to crush the serpent. Amen. Victory was coming on. They thought he was coming in like a political leader, but he was about to stomp out the devil. He was about to destroy the enemy. He was going to have death, was going to have no victory over us no more. So when they're laying those palm branches down, it symbolizes Jesus' victory on the cross for us. Amen. And when he had come into Jerusalem, all the city, it says, was moved. Said, who is this? And the multitude said, this is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth of Galilee. I just want to bring this up again. They, had, they don't even have the promise. They don't even have the Holy Spirit. They don't even have the sacraments. They don't have the sacramentals. They don't have all the church history. They don't have all the saints. They don't have the holy orders. And they're still moved. The entire city, it says. The entire city is moved by Jesus' triumphant entrance. How excited are you every time you go up to take the Eucharist? This is for everybody. You know, how excited are we that we get to be right there in front of our Lord? How excited are you when you go to confession? That triumph and entrance was going to lead to his sacrifice, death, and resurrection, which was going to lead to the Eucharist, which was going to lead to the confessional. All those things are all intertied with one another. How are you moved by the fact he became sin? who knew no sin, that you might become the righteousness of God. When he made that entrance into there, when he died on the cross, he took sin upon him. He took all of our sins upon him. Every single one of us. So that you might become the righteousness of God. So that we might be strengthened in our time of trials and struggles. I always look towards his triumphant entrance when times seem like they're getting tough and the trolls are out there and people are talking, I always remember, he thought about me. He thought about every single one of you. He knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to die on the cross. They did not kill a pig. They did not kill him. He gave up his life for every single one of you. Remember from the cross what he said? This is the start of it. Father, forgive your name. Whatever your names are, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. That's what, the, that's what Palm Sunday is the start of. I want to 
to ask a couple questions right now. And I want you guys to think about it for a second, okay? And just really just, if anybody can answer me, please answer me. Answer, answer the questions. You know, there's no right, there's no wrong. It's just a question I want. You guys heard what I was talking about right now, right? Jesus giving his life. Jesus knowing he's going to die. How are you being moved to carry more of a load for Jesus since he's made that grand entrance into your life? Or what more can you do for Jesus now that he's in our lives? This is a question, like what more can we do for him? He already died for us on the cross and sometimes we're like, oh, I went to mass twice this week and oh, I prayed the rosary all week long. Oh, I've done so hard and I got to do ministry one or two days. Oh God, why do I got to do it? He died for us on the cross. Serve every day, right? That's what it's about right there. Serve every day. That should be a part of us because he thought it's so important that he died on the cross for us to give us strength so that when we are going through things, when we are going through our struggles, when we are facing turbulence and trials and waves and storms, we could always look to the grand entrance into Jerusalem because he didn't think in anything. He was going to go through it. He knew he was going to die. And he still did it for every single one of you. One last question I want to ask before we get out of here. How are you showing your excitement? Shouting Hosanna and inviting others to enjoy in his salvation, which is for all. How many people are you inviting to church? Is it, can we make it an obligation that we, this Palm Sunday, we all invite somebody new. I just want to add this to it because the grand entrance, he already built a church, right? The grand entrance into Jerusalem, he was going to die on the cross, rise from the grave, he was going to ascend into heaven, he was going to leave us with the Holy Spirit, and we were going to have a church. But if our church ain't evangelizing, all of us, I'm out there sometimes and I'm sharing with people and the Jehovah Witnesses are in droves. The Protestants and the non-denominationals, they're all over the place. But we have the true deposit of faith here. Our church goes back to that. This ain't Joel Osteen 40, 50 years ago. You know, this isn't T.D. Jakes. This isn't all these churches that have only been around for 100 years. We need to start evangelizing. And I would even say this, on your social medias, because I see a lot of Catholics out there, praise God, you guys are on social media, Facebook, Instagram, but when I look through your entire page, there's not a single prayer on it. There's not a single thing about the church. Praise God if you guys want to go on your trips. Hey, praise God for all that. When you have your personal ones and people are looking at them, remember, they look up to you. They look up to you. People are looking at you. You may not think it, but everything you post on there has an impact on somebody else. Don't you want to post something that enlightens somebody and strengthens them? We have to combat against the social media. I'm actually, it's a call to help. It's a call to action. To post a couple times a week. Something about the church. Something about saints. Scriptures. Just imagine how many friends you have on Facebook or Instagram. If you're not doing it, then when you get up to heaven, you guys got to deal with Jesus. We have a platform to evangelize in every type of way. It don't take too much to post on Facebook or Instagram. One second, right? It just, it don't take that long. And if anybody says, they can't do it, okay, praise God. But well, I'm saying there's a war out there. And if we really say we love Jesus, then Jesus is going to be everything with us. He's going to be the center of our lives. Not just on Sunday, not just on Friday night when I'm at the sower, but in every aspect of my life, social media, at home, when I take my little vacations, when me and the fiance over there go on little vacations, we always make sure that God's first. I don't go on a trip without him being number one. She knows it. She knows that for a fact. I already wasted my life already. I've had my whole life to mess off and enjoy it and do all kinds of things. Please, let's be evangelists of Jesus Christ. You don't got to be up there preaching like me. But do your employees, do them, your fellow employees, do your family members know that you're Catholic? Same. Do you really wear it? Do you share it with them? Do you try to evangelize with them? This is our faith. 
Jesus died for all of us so that we can what? Not just receive that salvation, but share it with others. And so thank you for listening to me tonight. I love all of you guys. It's It's been a, a great time being with the sowers. Um, I, I love you guys and God bless you. Thank you. Remember, Palm Sunday. Don't clap for me, please, either. When we clap right now, stand up real quick. Stand up real quick. I don't want to be clapped for either. Please. I want us all to clap for Jesus. Because that's who needs the clapping. That's who needs the clapping one more time. So can we just do it in our Father together real quick? In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women and blessed are the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Remember, the more you practice your faith, the more that you live it out and you know it, the more when the enemy attacks one of your family members, we can smack them down. Practice your faith. Learn it. Be excited about knowing about more about Jesus. It transforms and changes lives. Amen.
Oh, my God. 
Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. 